Previously, my 2019 Volkswagen Golf R was rear-ended, deemed a total loss, then I bought it back for $6,500. With some help from Auto Body Strong, the body damage is just about repaired. To make this an extra special project and breathe new life into a car that I absolutely love, I bought a wrecked Audi RS3 so we can do a 2.5 liter turbo swap into my Golf R. After shaking down the Audi, I ordered a bunch of parts from ShopDap, and you better believe I clicked that Paul install option. So Charles ordered some parts for this project, and here I am delivering them because uh, he made me. And now we're gonna try to get to work. Our cars are here, Paul is here, now it's time to get swapping. First thing we're gonna do is start by taking off the wheels. It's not working for him. He gave me the baby size one. You believe this? Look at this thing. This is not a great start, Charles. Not a great start at all. Hamstringing me with underpowered tools. Look at this. You think he's compensating? Look at this, this thing, <laughs> that thing. Just take the wheel this, off. All right, fine. So a lot of what we're gonna be doing at this point is just removing nuts and bolts like fender liners. We're gonna get the bumper cover off, drain the coolant and a bunch of other stuff. Does he need to go up higher? This is a little low, but. No, I'm good. Uh, there we go. I didn't even have to rip and tear the way he did. It's because I'm a master mechanic with a heart of gold. Come look at how offset this bolt hole is from the bolt. It's perfectly that's lined up only, normally. That's, well, I mean, I would assume it's not half covered. Okay, well, we'll just have to drill the hole higher. It looks like we may have had a bumper glued back on. It's crazy though, like the whole front of this car is PPF'd. We got some janky workmanship too. Look at this fender foam. Ooh. No, it's oh, a, it's, it's a rusty, rusty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, juice, it's moist. It it's moist. Pretty close. Just like that. Our bumper is off. Someone left a note for us. That was me. So we test fit. So with our bumper cover off, we found some, I won't call it sadness, but unhappiness. It's not the same as sadness. We're missing a bolt. This little temp sensor, it's certainly not where it goes. It looks like this has probably been painted. What I wanna do is I wanna test fit our Unitronic upgraded intercooler and see how it fits on this car so I can start to wrap my mind around the difference front end wise between this one and the Golf because we're probably gonna have to hodgepodge some of those things together. Are we missing what? horn? <laughs> Are there no horns on this car? I hear the relay. I hear the relay too. But I don't Do we hear really anything. not have horns? He I bet. The horns? Oh, he upgraded the horns. He and put he kept Subaru them. horns, hella, hella horns. Hella, hella. Or an Auga horn. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, nah, dog, I'm keeping my Auga horn because that's fresh. This one's not thick. Uh, that other one's thick. Okay. That is beautiful. Not enough juice. Thanks. That one's got better juice. This, this is a terrible way to demonstrate how the size difference of these. Why don't we set them down? Like, I was trying to, but then you wouldn't come over there. You didn't say. I was trying to, he, and you he, wouldn't come he's over. saying nothing and doing even less. So this is the factory one. You can see it's not only is it thinner, but also this uses a different intercooler design. And this is uses a bar and plate design. It's a more efficient intercooler, but it's also heavier. When it comes to our intercooler setup, we're not gonna know exactly how that's gonna go until we're much further into the swap. Luckily, we have a bunch of options from the Golf intercooler, the stock RS3 intercooler, and the one I really hope fits, the upgraded one from Unitronic. Okay, so that is not a problem that we're gonna be solving right now, but it is something we're gonna be having to solve at some point. We're shelving the whole charge cooler issue for now, we got other stuff to do. That's far more important. Okay, so what's gonna happen next is I'm gonna drain the coolant, and while I'm doing that, Paul's gonna take the back wheels off. I also put the car up as high as I possibly could to give Paul his workout for the day. He also gave me the heaviest impact to take these <laughs> wheels off. <laughs> I'm gonna take this out of the way because it's really ugly, and yeah. I'm tired of looking at it. You ever seen one of these on a headlight? Nah. Little headlight filter Ventana. That's how you know you got high class car when you have that. I'm guessing it's just here and here and the radiator and condenser stay. Oh, yeah. That's just to hold the intercooler and radiator. If we just lift the radiator up out and of out. the holes in the bottom, leave okay. it in, we can pull all the rest of this stuff out. I'll, I'll make sure this doesn't fall on the ground and break everything. And you do that. What am I still holding? Oh, it's the... It's, uh, all right, can you hold this too? There we go, because now we can take all of it off. <laughs> it's always cool when you see a car like this, preferably once we get rid of this.
then it looks really cool. This is our hardware we're likely not going to need for the next car box. Okay. I'm certainly gonna get accused of throwing something in there that didn't need to go there. Take it off, take it off. Only here for moral support, apparently. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh -oh. Ah, it broke. The screw in this little pipe. Oh. Oh, oh. oh my. It's driven out the wrong side. That's not how gravity's supposed to work. We're just trying to not make a mess everywhere. You know the worst part when you deal with stuff like this is you slip and slide and coolant for the next six hours. Okay, this is a pretty big moment. We have exposed our Daza engine. It's still all bolted up and everything. And as you can see, there's a plethora of stuff that still has to come off, but we'll get there real soon. Next, car's going up. We're taking the exhaust off, taking the prop shaft out, taking the subframe out. It's getting a little high now. I'm getting, I'm getting a little nervous. Ugh. Side note, I love chicken pot pie. It's always too hot. Have you ever had a chicken pot pie that wasn't too hot? We make it sometimes and it's not hot when I eat it. I actually don't think these are factory pipes. I think the factory ones have, uh, I don't know if they're like secondary cats or... Yeah, I think this is uh, not right. I'm taking the old dog bone out. It looks like I'm doing so much work, but Standard. he's actually doing the hard work. Well, I'm trying to get this other sway bar end link off. They are not fun. So we're gonna persuade it a little bit here. Can't be stuck if it's liquid. Well, I was thinking about something earlier today. Yeah? Is this the first project that we've done on a car that we've owned and not something we've bought specifically for a project? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm pretty sure it is. Cause like the Scirocco. Bought just for the project. My Jetta. Your Jetta bought just for the project. Your Jetta. My Jetta just for the project. The Mustang. The Mustang bought to be thrown in the <laughs> trash can. But what about the R32 yeah. and the Mark V? You count those? Yeah, I don't really, they're Mark V's though. We don't really yeah. count those for anything. Pump it up, pump it up. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna take out the subframe. Okay, boop it. Woo! Man, that is a thick catalytic converter. You had a whole cart and you got a, all the power tools. These are their um, Pokemon. Those Milwaukee's are like Pokemon for me. Yeah. Gotta catch them all. That's revenge for him giving me the baby gun to begin with. Oh, damn. Well, this one's just spinning. All right, well, looks like we're gonna cut that right, too. Buddy. I should have cut that in a more responsible way where we could reuse the clamp. Yeah, you could have, but... But I didn't. All right. Oh, I wonder if this is just on there. The whole body smash, remember? Oh, because tweaked. Yeah. Normally those come right off. That wasn't too bad. Someone's gonna get hurt worse with what, what he just did. They run their forehead straight into the back of those pipes. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. He let me have this impact this time. Or he actually meant to save it for himself, but then I no, took I it. I just wanted to bungee this exhaust up. Two lines. Ready? Yeah. We say it in every video because it's still the best way to take exhaust rubbers off. Now you can cut it off all the way. You spent all the time bungeeing, you could've just cut that thing off. Well, I don't know if we're gonna need it. So we can get hit in the face with a pipe. I like my pipes, like I like my chicken pot pie, scald the guy. <laughs> I got some rust crunch in my mouth, I can feel it. Yeah, I don't know how it got there. How it be tasting. Yeah, it's, this is how it goes when yeah. you be working on these things. It do be like that. It's, sometimes you get some rust crunchiness in your mouth. Woo! Let's just say I'm not gonna be putting any of this jank that's, exhaust crap yeah, on my no, car, so. On. That's nasty, dude. Yeah, that that no way that's factory. No, it's not factory. So these heat shields might be transferred over. If you had to buy all these, they would be a lot of dollars. I'm doing nothing right now, just to be clear. You're, I'm, you're watching me on camera spin this. I'm accomplishing zero, it's not spinning down. I don't know why I got a bogus one. You picked that one. I Maybe mean, you were just drawn to it, like your two are kindred Like spirits. a moth to the flame. Yeah. Somebody help him. Somebody help me if I've hated this entire experience. I just want to point out that I have removed He's done three, three of, of them and, I, and I'm still <laughs> on the same one. So with these, you can actually bite on these pretty hard and pull down a little bit. Yeah, I'll do it like this. Oh yeah, that the, is, the pulling is what's got you. That's it. There we 
There we go. Yeah, so he did it. Yeah, I'm a professional. As I've always said, I'm not a real technician. No, he is a master mechanic for the article. <laughs> so before this, Charles had written with ChatGPT an intro for me to this series. None other than the man himself, the master mechanic with a heart of gold, the one, the only, Paul from Shop Death. Camera cuts to Paul smiling, wearing his mechanic's gear. Paul says, hey everybody, what's up? It's your friendly neighborhood wrench turner, Paul here at Shop Dap. I'm thrilled to have you back with us as we dive head first into the world of automotive awesomeness. Oh God, I thought that socket was gonna come flying at your face. I thought it exploded too. Now we're gonna take the prop shaft off. This is a special tool because you can't do any work on a Volkswagen or Audi without dropping your bolt seven times. This clamps around the prop shaft like this, and then it bolts on, and it allows you to whack it off. You can pull the back side off. And down. Right. Now he can... You got this end? I got it. Wait. Da, da 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 just like that. Big thanks to my friends at Apex Tuning for letting me borrow this tool that worked uh, really awesome. This is not really that much stuff. We didn't make an impressive pile, we, we did make a pile. We've done like 30 minutes worth of actual work. So where we are now is we've removed the exhaust, the drive shaft, the subframe, uh, and he's, sorry. <laughs> he's dripping everywhere. Now we're gonna get everything cleared out so that we can drop the engine out. So that's gonna be hoses, wiring, etc., so that we can then pull it out the front. I'm sorry for the witness that I'm about to put on. Oh, what? On me? Wait, don't do that. that. The last time I was here, yeah. he made my forehead bleed. I can't trust him. Look at all the gush. Oh. Oh. Oh, I almost. You almost ate it. I almost made a real problem for <laughs> myself. He ate. That's what the kids say. They say you ate. I don't really know what we that ate. means, but we just had some hot dogs a few minutes ago, and they were pretty good. This is a part that we're going to be using later. Here's a fun fact: if I need to get a replacement engine, they're like 15 grand used. Needless to say, hopefully, we don't want to be doing that. This process may feel like it's going insanely slow and. To be honest, it kind of is. Part of that is so we can make sure we are diligent and organized with what we're doing. The better job we do on the teardown, hopefully the easier it'll make it go when we put it back together. Yeah. At least not scrambling around looking for the 87 things that you put somewhere stupid like a bunch of doofuses. Like a bunch of ground wires that aren't connected. <laughs> One of our last bits before we can pull the engine is removing the axles. Sometimes that's really easy. Ours did put up a little bit of a fight. Rude. Did your axle come out or? Oh yeah, I pushed it. This one's not. I, I don't, mine came out really easy. Ugh. Let me see if I can find that tool that I have. There we go. You do this. Ah, jeez. All right, is it completely out of the way? We're just gonna slide back in. No, I'm not gonna slide back in. Oh, cool. Woo! She. That was harder than it needed to be. Okay, this is it. We're about to pull the 2.5. Paul's got the trans bolts out for the uh, transmission mount. I'm gonna do the engine side and hopefully it doesn't come flying down. Buckle up. Uh, and we're about to see all the cool things that we forgot to disconnect. All right, I'd like to see that engine wiggle wiggle. Oh yeah. Oh show. All right, it's nice. And slow. Gently. We can also probably come go down, down a little now. bit if we need uh, to. We yeah. can't go crazy because the downpipe's still got to clear. So nope. it's on the frame rail. That's all. Come on now. Oh now. Watch your fingers because this might go ahead. Just yeah. regurgitate. Gotta keep going a little more. We're gonna have to get these off of here. Yeah. Whoa. No. <laughs> she's off to the races. Nope. Oh, she's really off to the yeah. races. All right. That's it. Mm. One, two, five, out of the hole. That was a very small percentage of our overall work. 
So somebody hollowed this cat out, because I can just stick my hand in there. I bet you that's what that is. Yes. Took the downpipe out, put it open, busted all the catalyst material out. And then shook it out. And then put it back in. So something that we verified after taking the engine out is this car was heavily modified before it was totaled out. And then the guy stripped all of his modified parts off the car before he gave it back to the insurance company, because there's loose things all over the place, including the downpipe, the turbo inlet, and a bunch of other components, including the fact that it had E85 fuel in there at the time of the accident, but no evidence of ethanol related mods otherwise. It's quite sus. Okay, so Charles has put together this wonderful checklist so we can monitor our progress of our project. This is our RS3 side. This is our golf side. We have already completed our seats. We have removed the front end, the subframe, the exhaust. I'm salty about the damn downpipe. Prop shaft axles, they were sad, but that's okay. Engine and trans, I gotta say that's uh. Pretty good progress to start. You may remember back in episode one where we talked about this guy being woggly and loose. Well, here's the bolt that they broke off and it looks like they tried to drill it out, but it's loose. You could just spin it out by hand. Not a fan of that. It was also missing one bolt. This bolt was not there and the seal wasn't there. Normally I wouldn't tell you guys all these little knickknacky things, but I'm real salty about that downpipe. So you get to see all of the things that are making me annoyed. Honestly, not a big deal because we have the thick boy. Unitronic, that's gonna go right here. Obviously, whoever owned this car before had a bunch of mods to it, took it all off after the car got totaled. I think we've really hit that home, but it doesn't matter because we are also putting some mods on and hopefully we're one-upping their mods with cooler mods than they had. I am a little worried about the fitment because this oh. thing looks tight. With our Daza and our DQ500 removed from the Audi, it's time to shift over to the Golf. When it comes to the Golf, we're gonna be a little bit more careful and a lot more organized. I also have a new core support because if we remember, the doofus, the doofus that towed the, the car broke it. That sounded all right. Just like, ah. <laughs> every time I work on stuff, my kids, they always, you know, they have those injury reports. You know, they give you kids every time they get like hurt in any way, they're like, look at this, I get hurt here. Oh, yeah. So then they see my hands, they'll be like, what happened? You're like, uh. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea. Draining the catch can. Look at how much yuck he was in there. Yuck. Paul, what's the retail on these? Like $600? Yeah. They're so expensive. Yeah. For you guys, $900. Oh God, 700 boomers just had heart attacks. Oh, it's on concrete. It's a on battery concrete. on concrete. <laughs> Sound the alarms, the battery's on concrete. By the way, working on the Golf, this should be way easier. Not only are Paul and I much more familiar with this car than the RS3, but this car hasn't had as much hackery done. No rust. I don't know where anything is. <laughs> you want to see what I do is I just keep opening drawers until I find what I need. That's how it works. You want to hear something funny? That's what I do in the <laughs> This is the same way I had my roll cart set up at the dealer for the last 800 years. Out. This is legit the worst part about doing a charge cooler is these stupid clips. These little guys, we cut them on the RS3 because they're awful. But on this one, I'm gonna cut the core support to salvage those. We call up shop dap and say, hey, can I talk to Paul? And they're like, sure, he'll talk to anybody, no problem. <laughs> and then you'd be like, hey Paul, uh, is it cool if you come to my house and do my swap? And he'll be like, yeah, buddy, I'm on my way. Uh, Master <laughs> mechanic <laughs> with a heart of gold. Look at that. This is much heavier than the other one. That's a juicy goosey there. It would be great if there was a place to just like get the bottom of the coolant. You just like untake a plug out and it's just like at the very bottom. It's not a Toyota, Paul. It's gonna work out there, bud. Yeah. I successfully didn't break it. Thank you for that. Uh, going up, I think we're gonna take the subframe out next. Downpipe, probably leave the axles bolted up. They should pop right out. So what's cool is I'm still finding like damage that I hadn't seen before. Like this heat shield just completely ripped. Oh. I, I don't even know how that would happen. How did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> heat shield, bent, but easy. Downpipe, simple. Dog bone, no problem. Subframe, piece of cake. Look at this big old clump of wax that came out of this bolt. Okay, subframe's out. Uh, drive shaft's about to come out, and then we'll be ready to yank this engine on out of there. Right on out.
The prop shaft and the axles are much easier to take out than they were in the RS3. So with all that out of the way, we can lower the car down and get everything in position for the engine to come on out. There we go. Instead of mowing down. Come on up. Come on up. And just like that, we have both of our engines on the ground, the 2.5 out of the Audi, the two liter out of the Golf, and pretty soon we're gonna take this bad boy and cram it in the Golf hole. Now what makes this swap work pretty well is the fact these are MQB chassis. So when you see them side by side, you can see the similarities. Now you can see on the side here, there's an additional radiator here, as well as the other side. And on the RS3, you can see there's additional radiator here and here as well, but they're different and bigger. Well, the brake booster is gonna look very similar because it's MQB to the one in the Golf R. We're gonna keep the one in the Golf R because there's no reason to swap all that over. The fuse panels on these cars look very similar, almost identical actually, but Charles is gonna be using the Golf R one in that car and then adapting it to work with the RS3 stuff because making this one into that car means you have to adapt the body into this fuse panel and that's a mess. With the powertrain out, you know what we gotta do. We gotta power wash that engine bay. Granted, you'll never see it again, but you'll know if you don't do it. Before we put that Daza in the Golf, we have a couple of other things to transfer over first. These are gonna be really easy to do now and really hard to do later. We have to swap the fuel lines over from the RS3 to the other car, so we're just gonna pop these lines off. I struggled with them for a while, we don't need to talk about that. And I also dumped some gas on myself, so that's cool. And now we can feed them through the body of the car here, up front into the engine bay. And here we go, just out, just like this. That's it. This is all the fuel lines in your car. What I'll tell you is this actually has the high and the low side in one tube, so the little guy is actually running through the big guy. I don't know why it's like this, actually. They were like, how can we make air conditioning lines more complicated? They're just lines, it's way yes. too simple. I know, we'll put one inside the other. So because the AC line is different angle at this side here, we're gonna swap this AC line from the Golf off and put the RS3 one on. Meanwhile, I'm gonna wrap up the powertrain from the Golf so I can keep it nice and safe and sell it when we're done. One of the like pretty major things we need to do is drill an access hole for our RS3 engine mount. This is the mount that came out of it and we need to be able to access this back one. If we don't drill a hole, we don't get to access it. I'm gonna mark through here, which will get me my location. Then I'm gonna drill a hole about inch and a half, give or take. The only challenge is that the place I'm drilling is not flat, but that's okay. If it's wobbly, we'll clean it up with a Dremel. I have some factory Ginster paint. Unlike the Golf, this one's all one piece where the Golf this piece and this piece are separate, so. Uh, okay, this is it, the point of no return. We're gonna drill a hole in my car. It can never go back to how it was before. Actually, I'm mostly kidding, but it does, part of me does like have a little sadness about drilling this hole I'm about to drill. All right, there's my pilot hole. Now you might be wondering, Charles, why are you worried about a hole? The whole back of your car was smashed. Well, this is the hole I'm about to drill. I'm about to hole dozer this hole. Hey! Yeah! yeah. All right, so I clean this bracket up for the transmission mount. They are different. This one's beefier, obviously more power, all that stuff. We're gonna get this installed and ready for our 2.5. So same deal with these Golf R fuel lines, except for way less mileage and way less crusties. Pop the clip, pop it back, and I'm still spraying fuel everywhere, but, and you can see my glove is already shriveling up. See the size difference of these two? This one's huge, that's a return. And these feed line, you can see major difference in size, which is why RS3 lines are the same. I don't know why this is so much bigger. See if I can not break this one. There you go. Cool. There you go. Charles loves the zippy thing, so we gotta cut his zippy, and then we gotta take our lines and pull them on through. And there we go. Now we can take our RS3 lines and feed them on back. Whoop, whoop. 
and just like that. I'm also going to be swapping over the bracket for the ABS module, and the reason why is because this heat shield mounts on top of it, because obviously there's gonna be extra heat from the turbo being closer and all that stuff, so you wanna make sure you don't melt your ABS pump. So if you look at the Golf R, there's a stud here and then a hole here. On this cover, this is, goes through the stud there, and then this goes into the body of the car. On the RS3, you have a stud and a stud, so this stud goes over there, and this stud goes through this one, and doesn't have anything else to hold it in place, but we don't have a stud. What Charles opted to do was to go with the Golf R one, that way it looks correct and mounts correct, and so we just had to modify it. He cut off a piece there. The line should be able to snap into these different places that weren't used before, but we're gonna use them now. Yeah, see, that's not going anywhere. He really did a number on me is what he did here. These lines should have been in there first. Hey, Charles. Hey. Everything's going great. Don't worry. Nothing. Sure about that? Yeah. I, feel, I feel like that's- Nothing at nothing. all. Nothing I wasn't at all. blaming you for anything. Does this look factory or not? I say yeah, looks amazing. Now that our access hole is drilled and out of the way, I'm gonna clean up the frame rail and treat it with some factory yellow paint. The final Paul install option is the AC lines out of the RS3. The RS3 lines and the Golf lines are super close, but I didn't want to find out it didn't fit with the engine in the car. Okay, time to check off some Golf R things. Front end, subframe, prop shaft, axles, engine and transmission, AC lines and fuel lines. And this is me right now. That is a like terrifying me. <laughs> That's me, dog. That's terrifying. Uh, just look, spinning. we look the same. <laughs> Paul's scared of this guy, so he's got <laughs> My drunk's gonna be way better than his. No, nope, it got much worse. It was good until I just did that. <laughs> okay, we also have drilled the hole. Paul installed our AC lines and our fuel lines. We don't have our downpipe yet, so we'll have to do that after the engine's in the car, but now it's time for this one. Rolling, 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 rolling. Booper in there. Now is the time. So we're pretty close right there, Ra. Uh. All right, I'm in axle wise. I feel like I'm gonna go under this blanket like I'm delivering a child. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> one bolt in. This one and the other one are much better. Our cart has a little bit of a downward drift elation, so. And put one hand here. There you go. Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. I was doing just fine. You weren't though. I was doing just fine until you, you messed. Sad boy status. Yeah. Paul's snugging that side down. We got to come back and snug these trans mounts. Then we can get all this garbage out of there. And we have officially bolted in our freaking Dazza engine. That My is amazing. Dazza, the best thing that's happened today. Do it. Yeah. Lower this down. Bang. Elegant. Bruh. That engine <laughs> looks so good. It looks like it belongs here. It fits beautifully. That's not going anywhere. Nah. You're just a one slapper. I'm a two slapper. Like it was meant to be? Like it was meant to be. With our engine and transmission bolted in, we have hit a huge milestone, but I think it's pretty safe to say we have a ton more work still left to do. And now we're on a timeline to get this car back to the body shop. Coming up on episode three. And we are gonna add this. <laughs> what is this even? That allows us to rob all the good stuff. You know, I do care about this and this and this and parts of this, well, that's not good. I worked really hard at that. Paul's my name, struggling's my game. And big thanks to these partners, including Liquamoly and Unitronic, that helped make this entire crazy project happen.